Welcome to Mailbox Part 2. In this installment, we'll clear some of the backlog. First stealth is Lucy, M6ECG, who asked if small variable capacitors, like you get on eBay, work for magnetic loops. The answer is they certainly do, especially for receiving loops. For transmitting loops though, you need to be a bit more careful. Look for an airspace capacitor. But even with a small airspace capacitor, your power handling will be limited, say only 5 watts. It's especially useful if they're two gang, because you can connect them in series and get lower losses. Also, it helps if they have a reduction drive, as that will make tuning easily. Still on antennas and from Flame Drag 18 is the question, have you ever tried using antennas a couple of metres off the ground or even running along the ground instead of needing a squid pole? There's a demo on antenna height in one of my kite videos. As the kite lifted the wire above the ground, the signals got stronger, and that would be the case on both transmit and receive. Then there's safety. The last thing I want to do is to have someone trip over a wire running along the ground, say on a beach. It's the same if I have the antenna one or two metres off the ground, as people will run into it. And did anyone mention EMR? So overall, it's all too hard. Much better to use a squid pole and get the antenna a decent height above the ground, and your results will be better. Violinist Warrior suggested I do a segment on obtaining a license. It's probably worth more than one video, and it's a good idea. But conditions and license qualification levels vary between countries, so what I mention here for Australia might not be quite relevant overseas. For Australia though, I'd suggest having a look at Ron Bertrand's videos. Search Ron Bertrand on YouTube. Ron runs the Radio and Electronics School and has a large number of tutorial videos, useful for people starting out in radio. Electro Noob was intrigued with crystal oscillator modules, the type that need 5 volts and fit in a 14 or 16 pin IC socket. How bad are their harmonics? Well, I'd say they're pretty bad, given their outputs are square wave. If you're going to use them seriously, I suggest adding a low pass filter, comprising of three capacitors and two inductors on the output. Formulas for calculating their values are widely on the internet. There were quite a few questions about the two transistor FM super regenerative receiver. Well, the super regen receiver draws only 1.3 milliamps, which is tiny. You can work out how long a battery will last by knowing its amp hour rating. Let's say you've got a 9 volt battery that has a capacity of 100 milliamp hours. I'm just guessing here. Given that the radio draws 1.3 milliamps, you do a simple division and you end up with around 70 hours of operating time. This is also highly relevant when you're planning batteries for QRP outings. You need to know both the transmit and receive power consumption and also the likely duty cycle so you can work out your power budget. From Electro Noob again, after watching me run after kite antennas, is I should release a DVD on physical fitness. Unfortunately, that's not very likely. My personal view is that pursuing physical fitness for its own sake is boring, although some people get a buzz out of it. If you're like that, then the only thing that I think works is to build some degree of physical activity in your own lifestyle. I must admit I'm lucky where I live because everything's within walking distance, including the beach. And still on kite antenna videos, there is certainly a great response. Some suggestions are for other types of kites, for instance a French military kite, and don't forget the bleed resistor. I've even felt static with 20 metres of wire on a squid pole, and it would no doubt be more with a longer wire supported by a kite. And there weren't even any thunderstorms around, the weather was just sultry. And have I thought of balloons? Well, that's a possibility, but I believe the wind needs to be very still, and living by the beach, there's usually some breeze. Rob in New Zealand had a few questions on CB radios. I don't know a lot about their current allocations. Well, they used to use 26 MHz, I don't know if they still do. And I can't comment on the legality of them using 27 MHz. As for contact with Australia, definitely possible, but very unreliable. And from Andrew VK1DA, yes it was Ron VK3AFW whistling a CW response when I was calling at the last QRP by the way. Quite a few nice comments on the improved sound and pictures. Well, it's not quite a new camera. I've had it for some time, thanks to Peter VK2TPM. 
The difference is I've got a new computer and that makes transferring the MOV format image from the new camera so much easier. The old computer was over seven years old, bought before I even thought about making videos. And that's Mailbox Part 2, hopefully answering many of your questions. If you've got any more, leave them in the comments below, if you can.